the lead and um, I would definitely say your experiences has helped support it kind of the way that you see it. Just going back to the one-to-one coaching, so you 20 years in, in coaching or one-to-one coaching and you must see, for me, I always feel, I feel like now there's a growth in one-to-one coaching. Yeah. Literally, most people are doing it or most people who have, it's almost like you're a school kid at a school and everyone's got, all of a sudden, got a nanny. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know what I mean? Like, you got a, everyone's got a nanny. It's like, every, oh, who's your nanny? You know, my nanny. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it, yeah. Is it is it is it helping or is well, it? It's, it's rough, I don't want to say yeah. there's cowboys out there in terms well, there of doing is, it, well, is, but I, yeah. I want to say is it helping or is it saturating? Too nice, too nice. Too nice. Is it cowboys? It's cowboys. Well, it's, oh, mate, it's, it's time stories I could tell you about the cowboys, but yeah, there's it's a saturated market now. Yeah, every man is dog is doing it. Yeah, which is fair enough. You know, everyone can add value to to a certain extent, but I mean that's you know that that's then you got to look if you know you're you're going to invest time and money in something for yourself or for your child. You know. Yeah what's the background of that person and what they're bringing to the pie, basically. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely like more and more, more people doing it. I mean, yeah, it is more of a, it's a like PDA football really, you know, it's tougher. They're there now we've got, but we've got like 12 or 13 coaches that work around the Southeast. Wow. Um, but I mean, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, you look on Instagram and every, you know, it's just literally, and, and also, you know, because especially after lockdown and it was anything, to, a lot of people went into it anyway and you can't really blame people, you know, I think if I'm a coach and I can't work, I've got a bit of money on the side. That's mm. why people, that's why I started mm. doing privates in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have extra cash on the side, you know, then it sort of turned into my main sort of focus, so. Yeah, yeah. so I just, yeah, just, it's just become interesting and definitely over lockdown where, Almost, you're doing. You could. That's the only thing you could do. Well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah. You know, it's too busy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm almost got to the point now where I'm sort of transitioning away, yeah. almost because it's done it for 20 years. I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe you know, I'm doing more stuff with my 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 cost software company anyway. Yeah. Transitioning, I'm maybe sort of getting to the point where I'm looking for a, a new challenge or something like that in yeah. terms of, you know, I've been out there and all. You know, it's it's great what I do and you know it's, it's great lifestyle and stuff like that and all the content stuff. But I'm a coach and I miss. That's what's been Contacts. good about being back in that environment a little bit. I miss yeah. the players on the grass and being in that. You know, we always talk about you know academy football is like they say in baseball the big show. You know, the eight. You know, the eight, yeah, you know, the majors. The that's, you miss being in that environment all the time yeah. and being surrounded by all those top players. You know, being yeah. challenged all the time. I mean, in your time at those two clubs, go on. Tell me some of the, who's, who's some of the young boys. Well, Skippy obviously Oliver Skip was yeah. like so I took him wow. to like almost sevens, eights, nines, and elevens. That was yeah. those age group. Those age groups were like and the age group low as well, the top. And you know, he's I think Richard talked about him actually a bit on the show like his, but he was very interesting because you know very we had a quite a good mix in that group of some of the boys from Tottenham. Mm. Those are a bit like a bit of them. He was this really nice little white middle class boy, <laughs> just could knack it, just be crying on the pitch, but like still you know doing Ronaldo's and step overs and beating <laughs> players and stuff. But you know. Wow. But a top always, but always playing up, you know, top, yeah. top player. Yeah, very good player. Very I good. saw Oliver Skip. I need to find the clip, but I think it was like a small six v six at Tottenham, my first team, and I think the ball came to me just this outrageous skill. Little man, mar- like backwards Maradona type yeah, thing. Yeah, literally. Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh my god, this guy's a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. Yeah, what's he doing there? What's, yeah. what's he doing around there? He needs to go somewhere. Um, what in regards to? I always think, although I've talked a little bit about it, well, a lot about the one-to-one coaching, I just think that the whole thing around one-to-one coaching, what what's your feelings around developing relationships and how does that sit in terms of that environment? Yeah, I mean, it's key. I mean, like, like anything, you know, whether you're working with a team or an individual, you know, if you, you've got to get to know them and, t- and it's about, you know, my job is to challenge pe- people as much as possible. Mm. So, you know, if I'm working with a Premier League player, or academy player or beginner mm. but how can I get the most out of those players and there's going to be different you know sorts of ways to do that but it's about really saying this you know how can I really you know, it's marginal gains you know this is why a lot of these people come and see me it's like yeah. kind of squeeze a little bit out, extra out you know that individual technical work my movement to try and get a little bit more maybe and that little bit more maybe is the difference between you know me getting a contract or not getting a contract or being yeah. a first team or being a 23s or whatever Yeah. so you know it's about that but it's about getting to know the players and you know and I'm fortunate because man, players will come see me because they've made the choice to come and see me so they want to you know, add something to their game or mm. you know, or, 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 or have a go basically so you know, it's about understanding what they want to do and how we can sort of work together to sort of maximise their and, output and, and obviously these players I mean I've got a list of names here you've got Max Aarons you've got Marcus 
Maguire, you got Tyrese John Jules, you got uh, regards to the ladies game, you got Haley Ladd, you got Helen Ward, and, and these are international, so to speak. Most of them, um, if not all of them, in regards to the youth internationals yeah. um, and some senior internationals, definitely with the ladies. But um, they must, there must be a reason to come back. What's the reason? What are they coming back for? Why do they want to come back year on year, time after time? Because uh, I suppose obviously they see value in it. They, yeah. you know, they got obviously like you know they're not you know. For instance, one of my clients said that he goes, he, you know, he said exactly the same. He plays, you know, he's a, he's a full international. Yeah. He goes, he doesn't you know what I give is different to what he gets at his club. So we'll say you know everyone says I want to do extras. So I come and then you know the, the assistant coach less the extras, and they say well there's not that much thought into it. Yeah, maybe that's just a joke. But then when my thing was a little like, one two in a shot. Well, exactly. You know what I mean, I'm going to set you edge of the box and you're going to smash the top corner. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so my job is you know to to you know that's what my specialism is is like you know trying to make it as game like or game realistic or get the game type outcomes and those things. I work position specific, you know trying to break the game down into those microcosmic examples and then try and reenact that in a pitch as much as possible me and a player. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking. I'm an I'm an I'm an academy manager. I'm looking at the evolution around this kind of one to one coach and I'm going to myself, surely we get a couple of these in the clubs. Yeah. Surely we go, do you know what? I need three souls in my club working with we got one works with the nines and tens we got one works with the 11s and 12s and that's just their job that is just that they they get a couple of individuals out work on what they want to work on and we have that resource in the club why haven't they like i think it's like uh, it's just not culturally sort of not necessarily accepted or just a general thing that we do here individual stuff they say well why can't you get that in your team session? Yeah, I know. I met on my A license the other day a guy called Gareth who's now doing that at Liverpool. So obviously yeah. Alex, or I worked with at Tottenham. He's yeah. a very forward thinking guy. Alex, uh, Alex Ingle Thorpe. Oh, Ingle Thorpe. Yeah, Alex yeah. Ingle Thorpe. So he's top. So he's, you know, he's, he's now got a tech skills coach, individual coach who works across the academy. Yeah. But yeah, I just think it's not like you know people don't you know <laughs> I've had battles like people from my former clubs who just just don't like me anymore because you know they see me doing the individual stuff of all their players. Yeah. So you know it's not something maybe you know. I just, I, I mean, in my in my head, I'm just thinking it's as I said that more and more young people have an, a one to one coach works on some of the things they want to get better. Obviously, um, with real specifics to it in regards to that technical output, and I'm thinking, hang on a minute, I'm I'm seeing a, 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 these boys, my boys or girls, go to individuals. Why not? Why not? Why not? I just get that individual and add value to my yeah. academy, um, which I think you probably then you, you lose a little bit of the rogues uh, or, or the cowboys as we call them in terms of the one-to-one coaching because they'll go, hang on a minute, I've got this at my club and it's established and it's 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 good quality and it's all the things that I thought I wouldn't get through being part of the group that mm-hmm. I can get one-to-one. Um, you probably need more than three because you love every every young boy needing it. Um, to add value, but I just, I just thinking, why, why haven't we done that? Why haven't we done? Well, it sounds like just from your experience that it is happening. Well, I said one. I mean, yeah. I've seen anyone else. <laughs> yeah, one. I mean, I was lucky when I worked at Spurs. Ricardo was there. Ricardo Moniz is like a, the best. When I was at Ajax, I visit Ajax. Yeah. Several times they say, you know, we try to get him in because he's the best in the world. What he does, he's a yeah. skills coach. Yeah. They couldn't afford him because he's like a first team manager now. But you know, he was just like inspirational. You know, in terms yeah. of just not in terms of just a. But his delivery and yeah. the way he captured the intention and the individual work he did <clears throat> in the academy. But he was a first team skills coach. He worked with the first team under Yale, but also did some stuff in the academy. Just got oh, wow. involved. So, you know, it's just culturally in in, in Holland it, they have every club has that. Skills coach, like, you know, yeah, have, yeah. That's part of the culture. It's just here, it's not because maybe because we talked about the technical. They say, well, we need that. You know, yeah. our passing drill, our rondo is enough to do that. Mm. I mean, go on, go on, if, do, do you get much pushback from academies in regards to? Um, Maybe they're, mis- they're seeing some of your content, some of your stuff, and saying, "Well, no, I don't mean to do that." I'll put it this way: I'm not allowed into one of my former employers. Grant, I'm probably not allowed into both of them actually. But yeah, I'm not. No, <laughs> they, they don't like mine because I work with a lot of their players and I post stuff on the social, so that winds them up a bit. They don't like that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this is up to the parents. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, the thing about academy, what you can understand, they want to control everything, like any club, which is yeah. fair enough. Um, but like I say, I offer something very different, you know, in terms of what they're providing. You know, if they offered that, then the people want to come and see me. 
like I say, I'm, you, you, I'm unique in what my philosophy is and what I deliver. It's a very un-English thing, unconventional type thing here to do. Yeah. So that's why players come here. So I mean, yeah, they, they because they don't, they don't they don't necessarily see the value it or understand it. You know, they're not controlling it. Then obviously they're discouraging. And no, they do. They'll say, don't go and see Saul. Don't need to go and see Saul to the players I'm working with. But don't go and see Saul. But what are they giving instead? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's the same. <laughs> and, uh, but essentially, some of the smaller clubs they'll. They don't mind. Yeah. You know, but the bigger clubs generally have an issue, which is fair enough because I can understand that because they want to control everything in their program. They'll say, "Look, we're giving you this. This should be enough." Yeah, would you but say then that parents they're overloading you? You may be overloading yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. But the reality is, they're going to be out playing anyway. Going to be doing extras anyway. In going to be in the park. They're exactly. going to be. They're going to yeah. be kicking about with exactly, their friends. Yeah. Um, I mean, which is interesting in itself. Where do, where do we go? I mean, isn't is is it enough? What what the academy's doing? Um, those extra five percent, ten percent that you're talking about, evidently are where players see the value. I mean, you're seeing a culture even amongst the the elite pros, pros, pros who are well within their careers in terms of the game. So you're going, well, you're in now. What are you doing extras for? But actually, those margins are huge. Um, we're coming from a culture that in the summer where players kind of rested, it was literally f- a four-week holiday binge where you're probably finding an environment where one-to-one coaches are going on holiday with their, their players and doing bits on the beach with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Well, essentially, because it's that new generation of players, so like those young players who really want to go in and they want to make an impression. So yeah. they know that the season pro is going to be on, you know, like I said, be on holiday and come back. He's not 100. percent Well, these guys, <clears throat> the last you know week or two weeks before they go back in, are just going at it hard. So when they go in, they hit the ground running and they're yeah. ready and yeah. they want to make an impression. They want to make an impression on the manager. They want to go on that first team tour, pre-season yeah. tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the you know, the uh, real sort of golden real ticket. For them. To the game press and then maybe get in the first team. So that's why a lot of yeah. these that pre-pre-season work is called is so. You know, it's, it's so you know, popular now. No, I found it fasc- fascinating and interesting in terms of the, the yeah the youth culture in terms of literally it's fifty two weeks of the year that they're thinking yeah. about training and thinking about um, developing themselves in a way that I just think culturally we we were we were a culture that when holiday time six weeks holiday if you're talking about schools and kids yeah. in schools that don't play any sport that kind of period of four to six weeks is literally downtime. Yeah, yeah. Um, you do nothing, you go out, you go party and you get chilled and then you come back and then you hit the ground running in exactly, September yeah. if you're in school or in the first week of, of July. Listen, those guys, football. they're still going away and they're partying and they're living life they're doing, <laughs> they should be, and then, but they're coming back a bit earlier and, yeah. right, I'm going to get ready, for, which is a great thing, attitude to have and it's going to give them, you know, a great opportunity, a great, more chance to impress, you know, their first team manager maybe doesn't know those yeah. Players, you know, they come in. Oh, he's made an impression. You know, he can stay yeah, and look do a shot. bit more. Yeah. Do you ever find that some of the boys coming in not always fully invested? You know what I mean, like, not that they're wasting your time, but you may find that, you know, I, I, you know I'm here and yeah, you know, some yeah, something like sometimes agents will come say, look, can you work with the player getting ready? And that's definitely, you know, maybe they're not completely buy in but luckily 99% of the time players are, they want to be there so right let's get to work you know let's, let's do some just do some stuff here and you know and then I say otherwise because it's the same as working with younger players you know the same we had a conversation about you know a parent will bring me an academy player so let's do this I'm saying well or, or not a, you know an aspiring academy player and they'll just get nothing out of him I say well, there's no point in doing this you mm-hmm. know because obviously you want it more than they want it and, and, and uh, we, we, we yeah we wanted to talk about that in regards to we kind of touched on it a little bit as well about managing expectations of parents I think on all types of levels you might get grassroots players families work in a grassroots yeah. environment and they want they want to come to you because I want you to get them to a level where we could potentially go on an academy trial or get into an academy yeah. is, is that is that always ex- like I get that a lot as well so I say you know a player will come and say look what's the, what's your aspirations what you want to do and because I'm like vetting yeah, yeah. So I've got PDA someone runs that company for me so we've got 12 coaches around London and the South East so I say yeah. like, they really want to work with you it's okay well, when I work with me so I have a conversation okay why do you want to work with me what's your aspirations yeah. where's he playing and so we do get to do a session this first session I'll say, and first I'll say look I think he's got a chance or she's got a chance yeah. so I can work and prove that I'll say look it's not worth the yeah. money yeah. it's much better working with one of my coaches a lot cheaper and you get two three sessions a week or yeah. whatever the same price and I'm, yeah. I'm just up front and blunt with people say look you know this is not no, I, I don't think That's I can. Good. There's no point in you know, I, you know, as flattering as for you to work with me, be much better work with a younger coach and come maybe come back and see me in a year or two. Sort of. Yeah. yeah. Another player, like for instance, we had a player recently came. You know, we worked with him for a year and a half now. It's difficult. He's in lockdown, and now he's at Southampton on trial. Real top player, but he came 
as a 10 year old I thought straight away can be an academy player just because the way he moved yeah, yeah, yeah. he was dynamic he was explosive yeah, yeah. technically good we moved him up so definitely he's got a chance he was yeah. an, he's an academy player you can see that in yeah. terms of the movement yeah, yeah. when you've seen that level of player so much I said okay well I can improve him I'm not saying I can get him into an academy do you I think that often do. happens though in terms of parents come and listen I want you to work with him or her for a year getting them to a level well they say I say look we can work I say look I, I say look I can work with this player and I can get him him or her, I can improve, and I think I can say they could probably play at, le- at an academy, mm. in my opinion. Mm. And if they can't, I say, well, there's no, you know. And then some people say, look, I still want to work for you. And I say, okay, fair enough, I can. But you know, unfortunately, I'm very busy and mm. have very few slots. But it's like, I, I'm I, sure I, there's I, others out there that go, yeah, we can work with you, we'll, and they're probably not at the level. Yeah, of course, you know that yeah. happens. You know, you know, people travel, you know, every year from all around the world to work with me in the summers and stuff like that. You know, pre lockdown. Wow. Um, you know, from Asia and America, North America. I'm very lucky. Do that, but I mean, you know, the bread and butter. The, my, my, the players here I work with generally are either academy or aspire academy or pro players. Yeah, that I'm, I'm working with. Yeah, excellent. And is there? I always kind of think for the boys that don't have much. I kind of think to some of the boys that I've coached and they don't really may not have the funds. Is there anything where you've got a player that's really really good and but and he really wants to work? With you? I don't know if it happens, but and they say, look, so I just can't afford it, but. We do want to work with you. Is there anything they can do with you? Or? So I, I do sessions with, I don't charge people. I've gone to charge, you know, for all, all my career basically working pro bono, as they say in America. Do you know what I mean? Players I've known and I support and I say, come in, I'll do a bit to you, that's fine, that sort of thing. And, you know, that's, that's, I've always done that through my career. Yeah. 